Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see each one here today. We say God bless you. If you're glad to be here, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me? We're going to go right into prayer today. Glory to God. We're glad that you're here today. We want to remember uh, Mary Miranda. Uh, she's real sick today. Uh, we want to uh, continually pray for David Tarrant. Uh, he is, uh, he, they're working on trying to remove a blood clot from his brain and they want to uh, clean his carotid arteries. And so it's real serious. Uh, they're going to give him until the next month, the 13th, I think. Um, but they're not giving him a large percentage of chance to be successful with the surgery if the blood, blood clot's still there. So let's pray that the Lord will use the, whatever he can to remove that blood clot for David. And uh, let's believe God for his help. Uh, today we still have a few out with the illness and some on traveling. And so let's remember all these today. Praise the Lord. Would you turn to your neighbor today and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it? Tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it? Uh, Tim is requesting prayer for a family, a friend of his. They lost their mother. So let's remember the family today. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you would, repeat after me and say, This is, this is the best day, best day and, the best and the best year that I've ever had, I've ever had because, because Jesus, Jesus is, with me. is with me. One more time. This is, this is the, best day the best day and the best year that I've ever had because Jesus is with me. Let's give him a clap offering this morning. Praise the Lord. And if you would, right where you are, would you join with me in prayer today? We're going to grieve for all of these people today. Let's believe God for our service today and for the music portion. Once again, let's allow God's Holy Spirit presence to bless us and minister to us. Amen. Father, we thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, once again, we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to bless the music portion of our servants. We ask you to bless the spoken word today. Lord, we lift up these sick in body. We remember Mary today. God, we ask you to touch in her physical body today. And David Tarrant, Lord, we're asking for a miracle for his physical body. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we lift him up before you today. And God, and for all these that are yet sick in their body, we ask you to touch them and minister to them today. Lord, we'll give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Lord, all those on the highway today, we're praying for traveling mercies and grace. Lord, we're asking you to have your way in this service today. Lord, may you stir up the gifts of the Spirit in the power of God. Lord, may you touch each one that's come today. And Lord, once again, as we submit ourselves to you, we bind every devil, every hindering force in the mighty name of Jesus, and we lose your power and your anointing and blessing in this place. Lord, walk up and down the aisles of this church today. Touch your people, Lord. Let us not leave the same way we came, but let us receive of your power and your glory. Lord, we give you the praise and honor today. We ask these things today in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Let's give him a clap offering this morning. And let's worship the Lord. Let's give him praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands one more time to the Lord this morning. Lord, we thank you today. And Lord, we honor you, Lord. We praise you. Give you glory. Hallelujah. We honor your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we honor your presence, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your mighty power. and Thank you for the victory, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, Lord, and honor you today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Hallelujah. For every answered prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory, praise, and honor. 
Thank you for the victory, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise and honor. Hallelujah. 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 Yea, I have poured my spirit out upon you, saith the Lord. Yea, and I have sustained you even in a dark hour. Yea, even when the enemy was at his fiercest, yet my spirit, yea, pushed him back and removed him from your presence, saith the Lord. And I have caused even in this hour a great peace to be in this place and in these people. And yea, I will not draw back from, yea, the things that I have spoken, saith the Lord. My spirit shall move in this house and this place, saith the Lord. Yea, many souls shall be won, saith the Lord. Yea, the enemy shall be put to flight. Yea, things shall change, saith the Lord. Yea, and my spirit shall move. Yea, even in difficult times, in difficult places, saith the Lord. And I will bring peace where men said there would be no peace. I'm going to bring peace, saith the Lord. And where men have said there shall be no resolution, yea, I'm going to bring resolution, saith the Lord. Where men said that I will not work or move, yea, those are the places that I shall move into, saith the Lord. My spirit shall reign in this house, in this place, saith the Lord. Yea, in victory, yea, shall be the hallmark of this church in this place, saith the Lord. Yea, and my spirit shall flow, saith the Lord. Yea, and many shall speak in tongues. Yea, many shall be filled with my spirit. Yea, and great joy shall be in this house. For I shall move and I'll not draw back, saith the Lord. And I'll cause my people, yea, to know my presence. Yea, and know the moving of my spirit. Yea, and to know my promises, saith the Lord. Yea, and strength and blessing shall be in this house. And I'll not fail you, saith the Lord. Yea, I will bring you deliverance, saith the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord said there's a door that you had been praying about. He come out of a son that something you needed done. He come out of Shandaraha. The Lord said he's opened that door for you. He's poured you out a blessing. He come out of a son that he had the Roro Shandaraha. It cannot be hindered. He's moved things and rearranged things. He come out of a son that he had the Roro in your favor. He show the Roro on Sandaranasa. He come out of Shaha. He kobo sandaraha. The Lord said, "Just walk into it." He sandaraha. It is done in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I have the, the scripture when Elisha and they had, they went outside and they had all those people that the enemy was against them. And he said, more are they that be with us than they that be with them. And even though, 
even though we may be a small group, we're a majority this morning. Amen. Hey, we're a majority today. Amen. We're a majority today. And the scripture said it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Amen. So I feel like I'm a majority today. Amen. And we are on the winning team. I don't care if there is three of us left, we're still going to win. <laughs> Amen. We're still going to win. God's going to make a way where there's seeming to be none. We praise God for it. Amen. That is the godliest woman you'll ever meet. No one knows much about it. She knows all the people in Hollywood. She's not like them. They all love her. That, that prophecy, you can believe in that one. That's praise not the Lord. person going up with Jess. She don't like to do stuff like this. That's Amen. Tammy's sister. She's a real deal. That one. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's give our praise team a hand this morning. Let's tell them thank you today. We praise the Lord. We give God glory this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated this morning, and we're so glad for all of you that have come today. Amen. And if it's all right, we're going to ask our brother Johnny to come and receive our morning uh, tithe and offering. This goes to the expense of our church. We'd like you to give us unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like for you to bear with me for just a second. I want to read to you first out of Romans chapter 4. It says, What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he was something, uh, he was something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Not to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but trusts in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessings of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Is this blessing then only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We say that faith was counted to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it counted to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? Or what, it was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the father of all who believe without being circumcised, so that righteousness would be counted to them as well, and to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised, but also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. And I'm reading you that because the Lord was showing me during this week that in 2012, this month, two years ago, I had gone to the doctors for an appointment. I'd come back and I was just praying in tongues and I testified of this before. And the Lord led me to see my daughter in a state that wasn't of him. And from that moment on, Pastor, my prayers had changed. They didn't testify because I seen my own child in a place that I did not like her to see her. Your prayers intensified, I believe, because I shared my heart with you. And you prayed with me. And from that moment, the Lord started moving. Things started happening. He used our own court system to change the relationship I had with my daughter. He used our court system, and she had to go through steps. And because of that, I had to go through steps. And it was nothing that I did on my own, because I didn't have the power to do so. Nothing that I could physically do or say, because this was the court system. But it was God showing me that had I just keep, if I just keep on, if I keep on doing the things he would do, he, he, he just showed me this, that he showed me her before in a state that I had no power to, to touch, but a state that I didn't like. And I had to go through all this, these different things for two years, classes and do whatnot. But on April 1st, two years later, I had the victory. I went to court, Pastor, I forgot the letter. I can't believe I forgot the letter. But it says on there, she's completely mine. Everything's over with. They gave her me full custody. They took away custody from the other, the other parent. They gave me full custody. But the victory is completely mine. 
because of him. I couldn't have done it by my own. Have faith in the things that he's promised you. What he's spoken to you, have faith in that. Never leave, never waver from that. Because no matter how long it takes, no matter what you have to go through, that battle, he has the victory already. Show your faith to him. Keep on doing what he's called you to do. And never, ever stop. Never, ever stop. Because your victory, oh, your victory is glorious. Father God, we thank you and we praise you this day, Heavenly Father God. We ask you, Lord, as we're about to take up this offering, Father God, that you would use it for your righteousness, Father God, making all the needs of this ministry, Father God, come to pass, Heavenly Father God, providing for everything that we have need of, Father God, in Jesus' name, for each one of us, Heavenly Father God. Increase our faith in you, Heavenly Father God, that we can look to you, Lord Father God, no matter how strong or, or big the trial may seem, Father God, you are greater than all these things, Father God. So we bless you today, Father God, and we thank you for each one that came today, Lord Father God. We ask you to bless their lives, Father God. Bless them in their needs, Father God. Meet them in their needs, Father God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. You may bring your offering. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for the slides. You guys like these slides? Let's give them a hand. Thank you so much. It makes it so much easier. If everybody doesn't have a bulletin or if it's kind of too small to read, we have the, the slides to back us up. And I think that's just fabulous. Um, coming up, we will announce that today there is a ministry staff meeting at 5 o'clock for all of those who are working in the ministries here at Rock of Faith. Next Saturday is Women's Fellowship at 10.30 with Sister Gloria Thompson as the special speaker. And please let Margo or Pat know, uh, ladies, what you're going to bring to the potluck so they can have a nice balanced meal. Next Sunday is the board meeting at 5 o'clock, so board members, that's going to be before the evening service. And then um, be in prayer on the 18th is, is Good Friday, and following is the 20th is Easter Sunday. Praise the Lord! This is why we are here, because of Easter Sunday. Praise the Lord. And then I believe it's the 26th, the children have an event, but Teresa will update us on that. On May the 3rd is our annual mother-daughter uh, banquet. It's at 11 o'clock here in the Fellowship Hall. Um, I'll be having tickets starting next Sunday, and you can get them from me or from Pastor. Uh, women are $7. Girls ten, under 10 are $5. And under 4 are free. Praise the Lord. We'll have a nice buffet and fellowship and uh, some prizes and things like that. Sister Teresa, will you update us on children's ministry, please? I shouldn't have been doing, 
And I said, Lord, how can I come to you like this? He said, girl, you come as you are. Come as you are. And here I am today because people need phone calls. Get out of your comfort zone. Pick up that phone. If there's somebody that needs to be sitting next to you in that pew, call them. Get on that phone. Call somebody. Convict them. Get them in this church because our lives depend on Amen. That's a beautiful testimony. Thank you. So right now we are going to dismiss our kids to Children's Church. Please give them a hand and a prayer as they go. And talk to Pastor and Sister Teresa if you want to get involved in this wonderful ministry. Here's Pastor. Praise the Lord. We are thankful for all of our children. Praise the Lord. Amen. They are a wonderful blessing to us. Amen. We have a lot of events coming up. We mentioned on the 26th the kids this month. Next month is our picnic coming up, our annual church picnic on May 26th. That will be on Memorial Day. And so the weather is changing, and hopefully we'll have a, a nice warm day for that picnic. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, Steve wanted to testify today, and so we're going to let Steve testify today. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We had, uh, we've had several testimonies, but I want to say this before we get started this morning. This is Don over here. And last month when we did communion, he got saved while we were taking communion. He gave his heart to Jesus. Amen. And he was born again. Well, one month ago, we're going to, Lord will be receiving communion today as well. But God is doing wonderful things, and we're having testimonies just almost every single service. God is doing wonderful things for people. Let's continue to pray, and, and let's see God do some of the most fabulous things. Amen. You know, I don't, I don't think God is just, it's not too beyond God. When Paul was in the court of Festus and Agrippa, uh, as Paul was giving his testimony, he said to King Agrippa, you believe what I'm saying. I know you believe. And King Agrippa knew the things that was happening, and he talked about being raised from the dead, that Jesus was raised from the dead. And King Agrippa said, almost you persuade me to be a Christian. But he knew the things that Paul was saying was true. He didn't call him crazy. Festus called him crazy. He said, you lost your mind. But King Agrippa listened to what Paul said. And, and I believe that it's not beyond God to do the same things that he did back then. He can do them today. Hello? He can still do the supernatural. Can I get a witness? Amen. Whatever he did in the past, he could still do today. And we want to get in on it. How many want to get in on it? I want to get in on it. Amen. And so let's believe God. Let's trust God. And let's keep praying. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to dig right into the scriptures this morning. And if you have your Bibles, I uh, would uh, like you to turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 today. 
And uh, we're glad for each one that's here today. Praise the Lord. Would you turn to your neighbor, neighbor and smile really big and tell them, this is a friendly church. Amen. This is a friendly church. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to ask our brother Johnny, would you ask the blessing on the word this morning, please? Amen. If you would, uh, let's start in verse 7 this morning, chapter 7 and verse 7 of the book of Matthew. Amen. It says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye, the, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do, you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns of figs, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him liken he I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Amen. This morning I want to share uh, some things about this passage of Scripture that I think are, are very significant. And in a day and an hour, when so many churches and so many people are changing what they believe about God, changing their, their, their tenets of faith or changing what they really truly believe in, I wanted to take a little bit of time and to share with you about these truths that we uh, believe in in the Bible. These are eternal truths. These are truths that are good forever. And I wanted to share a few things this morning about them. But, but most of us, amen, in here, if not all of us, when we were younger, we were taught certain things. 
We were taught the commandments of God even as little children. Even in school, we were taught things like we shouldn't lie, we shouldn't cheat, we shouldn't bear false witness. Many of us had parents, even if they weren't Christians, mine were not Christians, but my parents would uh, hold the line, I mean tight, when it came to lying or cheating or doing things incorrectly. Hello. They weren't Christians, but if you lied, I'm telling you, you went to the woodshed. Can I get a witness? Amen. If you cheated somebody, you got into trouble. Amen. And so while I was thinking about these things this week and while I was praying, God began to deal with me about truth being eternal. And the things that we learn from God are things that will never, ever change. And we teach them to our children. Someone taught them to us. And our children will teach them to their children. And the very truths of the word of God are going to carry on forever. I'm going to have a fit here today. Amen. Jesus said there's a lot of things going to change. Amen. But in heaven, he said, my word shall never pass away. The earth is going to pass away. The heavens are going to pass away. The things that we do today and Maybe even how we dress, of course, is going to change because we're going to have an eternal body. Glory to God. Things are going to change. But he said, my word shall never pass away. And I began to think about how that I like to grab a hold of the word of God. And I like to cling to it because it is never going to change. I like things that don't change. Can I get a witness? Amen. There's so many things that have changed in my life since I was a little boy. Many of the stores I used to go to as a little boy no longer even exist. Many of the things I purchased as a, as a boy, soda pop and different things, you can't even find them in the market. Amen. They're no longer there. And you can't get them for a dime what I paid for them. Can I get a witness? Amen. You can't get things because it's not there. But when we come into the things of God, the things that we believe in are reality and they're forever. Amen. I like what Brother Johnny was saying this morning about his testimony. Amen. But one of the words that's one of my favorite in the whole New Testament is justification. And that word justification means as if we had gone into court over uh, our sins. Amen. And we went to before a judge. Amen. And the judge exonerated us and we were totally forgiven of every one of our sins. And then we we're given a legal document to prove the fact that we are totally innocent of everything that we've been accused from. I love that word justification. And I want to tell you, it's never going to change. Hallelujah. Oh, it blesses me. I don't know what it's doing for you today. But Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want you to know if somebody said that 2,000 years ago, they could get saved. If they said it a thousand years ago, they could get saved. If they said that 500 years ago, they could get saved. If they said it yesterday, they could get saved. If they say it today, they can get saved. If they say it a month from now or two months or six months, they will get saved because when Jesus went to the cross, he forgave men of their sins. And if you will follow the instructions of the book, what Jesus sacrificed for you 2,000 years ago will work for you today. Can I get a witness? Amen. It won't ever change. It will always be there. If you sin today, First John says Jesus. That if you will confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sin and, and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. It will be good tomorrow. It will be good. Amen. Next Friday. Can I get a witness? Amen. It's always going to be good. It was good a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. It's going to be good. Amen. If the Lord carries a thousand years from now, it's an eternal truth. Amen. You can believe in it. You can hold on to it. It will bless you. Come on. It will bless you in the midnight hour. It will bless you when you fail. It will bless you when you've done right. It will bless you because it's God's holy written word. Can I get a witness? Amen. I don't understand why churches are changing. Amen. 
They are not holding the word, amen, of God. They want to make something different, amen, to make it pleasing to somebody's flesh. I heard on the Christian radio the other day, Christian people are saying that we don't have to hold the line, that we don't, we don't, not supposed to, we necessarily, amen, have to follow the Bible so accurately. And I realized that you, if you've heard what I said this morning in reading to you, there are many people that are going to come to Jesus and say, Lord, Lord, let us get into your heaven. And he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. There's another scripture that says, God forbid that we should sin, that any good should come from it. I wish I could get a witness, amen. You have got to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, and there is power in the blood of Jesus. And I don't care what anybody says, if you line up with it, amen, you don't have to compromise and go back into the world. The power of the Spirit of God can change your life, amen, and things will be different for you. Can you say amen? I feel good. Amen. You know, this is a time of year that we also share, even as kids, this is the time of year where we share about how polywogs grow into frogs and, and caterpillars go into butterflies. It's something we've all learned even when we were children, when we were even real young. We knew the fact that the caterpillar winds itself in a cocoon and then later on it breaks out of that cocoon and it becomes a butterfly. And we've seen, and I know as a little boy, I used to go down to the riverbed and I used to chase polywogs. Can I get a witness? Amen. Anybody do that? Amen. I did. Amen. And my dad told me they're going to be turned into frogs one of these days. You'll be chasing them and they're going to be a frog. Amen. And I began to think about, the Bible says when we're born again, all the old passes away and everything becomes new. And this is a time of the year that God is trying to emphasize that transition in life where whatever you used to be can change. Whatever you used to do, amen, can change. You can be a new creature. Come on, you can go from a tadpole to a being a frog this morning. Can I get a witness, amen? You can go from being a caterpillar to being a butterfly. Can I get a witness, amen? You can change, hallelujah, because of the power of the Spirit of God. And I began to think about how wonderful God is. And the Bible says that He doesn't ever change. We love the sign that's over here. But I'm so glad for Jesus that He doesn't ever change. You can come to Him today just like people did hundreds of years ago. And the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower where the righteous can run into it and be saved. Is anybody out there, your mother, your grandmother, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, that they believed in Jesus like you do, and they used Jesus as a refuge, amen? Maybe they lived on a farm, amen? Maybe they lived 200 years ago, but they found Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and Jesus became their refuge, amen? And they prayed to God every day, and God got them through their life. I wish I could get a witness, amen? brought them through difficult times, times of war, times of famine. Can I get a witness? Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he will always be there if we'll seek him. Can you say amen? amen. They have in a lot of the young people's groups today, they do a lot of the rock and roll, and they have smoke and lights in the building like the rock and roll bands do. Amen. On television and when they go across the country. And I realize that people are looking for something other than what Jesus is. Amen. We could do smoke and lights and often illusionists use the same thing to misdirect you. Amen. When they're doing a magic trick and they have smoke and lights and different things in mirrors. And I know some people even think they can make an elephant disappear. Can I get a witness? Amen. He didn't disappear. Can I get a witness? Amen. They just moved the mirrors. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> I'm preaching to me today. Come on. Can I get a witness? You believe they really moved the elephant? Amen. He disappeared? No. But in this, in this day and hour, someone is looking for some, something different. They're trying to dress up something that's not even real. 
They're trying to make God out to be nothing and the smoke and lights to be something. And they're going past the supernatural looking for the spectacular when the supernatural has been here all the time. Jesus has never left. Hallelujah. You can go and talk to him any day or any time you want to. And the same blood that came off the cross that saved humanity 2,000 years ago will save you if you'll come to him. Amen. Now, I know a lot of people think that Christians are square. And we belong to four square, by the way. Amen. We're square every way you look at it. Amen. Hello. But the Bible says the New Jerusalem is four square. The New Jerusalem is perfectly square. Amen. And the idea is there is refuge in God. And I don't want to change who Jesus is. I've seen couples get together. I'm going to get in trouble today. And they try to change their partner. They try to make them something that they're not. Hello. You don't act like I want, so I'm going to make you act like I want. Good luck with that one. Amen. They took, <laughs> many years ago, they took a transient out of, I think it was Chicago. And they took this, out, this man out, and they gave him a good bath and shaved him and gave him a haircut, put a brand new suit of clothes on him. And... They tried to say, look, we changed this person. And then they didn't do anything to help change his nature. And so they just put him back on the sidewalk, dressed up in spiffy. Amen. And in 10 minutes, he's back at the trash can. Can we get a witness? Amen. In 10 minutes, he's eating a bologna sandwich. Y'all not listen to me. Amen. And within a week, his suit looked like the stuff he had. Amen. Months ago. Can I get a witness? Amen. Because he's still living the same way. He didn't change. They just painted him. Can I get a witness? Amen. They cleaned him up. Amen. But God has a plan for your life. And he can change it. And supernatural things can happen to you. Glory to God. Come on. Things can happen for you. Hallelujah. Where your life changes. Amen. Come on. When I got saved, things changed for me. People saw it in me. They said, you're not the same person. I said, you're right. I don't go the same places I used to go. I don't talk the same language I used to talk. I don't do the things I used to do. I don't want to go there anymore. I'm a different person. I like the different person. I'm not a caterpillar anymore. I'm a butterfly. Can I get a witness? Amen. I'm not a polywog. Amen. I'm a frog. Can I get a witness? I'm a different being. Hallelujah. In these, in these scriptures, as Jesus is speaking to the people, Jesus always is trying to catch people's attention because he's supernatural. And he said, I use parables for this reason, amen, I am trying to teach you spiritual things by using examples that you know. And he said, how will you believe if I tell you earthly things and you don't believe, if I tell you spiritual things, how are you going to believe? You're not going to understand it because it's made of the Spirit. I'm trying to relay to you the way that you're supposed to live and what you're supposed to do by using these parables. Amen. But in reality, the Spirit of God does things that we cannot do. Amen. The Bible calls the Spirit like the wind. You don't know where, whither he comes and whither he goes. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes into a person's life, it changes you. Amen. You don't always see a, the wind itself, but you can see the results of the wind. Many of us, amen, have been through Santa Ana's, and after a huge Santa Ana on Euclid Avenue, you can see trees blown down and limbs blown down and bushes blown over. Can I get a witness? Amen. You can see the effect of the wind. And I'm saying the same thing about God is once he comes into your life, there's a change that takes place. Amen. And you become a different creature. Hallelujah. It's awful quiet in this place. Now, I met a lot of Christians that are mean as a junkyard dog. Can you get a witness? Amen. 
And they were supposed to get saved and have a new nature, but I can't see the new nature. Amen. Hello. Amen. I wouldn't go in their yard if they were a dog. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hello. No, there's something that's got to change. And once the change comes, then you begin to live this life that, that, that Jesus talks about here, that he wants to walk it out in us, that we need to live this life and let it become a beautiful way. And we're supposed to love our enemies. Amen. Hello. Come on. Amen. It's awful quiet today. Amen. We're supposed to be following those ten commandments. And they're not ten suggestions. They are ten commandments. Amen. Hello. We have learned them from years ago. And as I said, even from non-Christian parents. You don't lie. You're supposed to honor your father and your mother. Oh, it's awful quiet. You're supposed to honor them. I don't care if your mother was the wicked witch of the West and your father was mean as a junkyard dog. You're supposed to honor them. That'll soak into you a little later on. Amen. Hello. Honor your father and your mother. Doesn't mean they're perfect people, but you're supposed to honor them. Them. And if you if you want to follow the truth of it, the scripture says if you will do that, you will live long on the earth. Amen. If you want to live long on the earth, then you will honor your father and your mother. If you don't want to live long, don't do it. But if you want to live long on the earth, you need to obey the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, within the last week or so, I saw something on the news that said, that if couples will hold hands, and if they do that regularly, they'll live two years longer. And so the last two weeks I've been holding Linda's hand, so I, <laughs> I want to go a couple more years. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> Amen. It'll work. Can I get a witness? Amen. God's intent. Amen was for me to learn these things so that I could, I could develop and be what he wanted me to be. L let me just, just share today. When I first became a Christian and God began to talk to me about becoming a pastor, it just seemed so far removed from me that I couldn't even grasp it or understand it. Honestly, when people began to talk to me about it initially, I thought, you have got the wrong person. Hello. You've got to be talking about somebody else and not me. Hello. You can think about yourself what you want, but I thought, no way. Hello. When I was going to college, my plan was to become a coach. Amen. And it, it was amazing to me after I became a Christian, even though I didn't follow in line with becoming a coach, I still never thought myself as a pastor but God took me and for 15 years began to teach me the gospel began to teach me how to do things began to show me how to do weddings how to do funerals how to visit people how to get a sermon ready how to pray for people how to counsel people how to get information and then I had plenty of lessons I wish I could get a witness lots of times through the woodshed can I get a witness amen Lots of instruction, lots of teaching. And I didn't know it, I, he knew it, but even for many years I thought this is never going to happen. I'm never going to be a pastor. And finally one day, the day arrived, and God began to deal with me about doing it. And I realized that this is the day, this is the time. I have been preparing for this for 15 years, and it's now my time to step in to put the mantle on and become a pastor as God has chosen me to become. And I went from being a caterpillar into being a butterfly. It took me 15 years, but I became a different person. After spending all my life trying to become a coach, I ended up becoming a pastor. Can I get a witness? Amen. God changed everything, began to work on me and renew me. Amen. And teach me and direct me in the way that he wanted me to go. And initially, I didn't think I'd ever get here, but God knows what he wants, and God knows how he wants to do it, and you don't understand it, but your life may be in turmoil this morning, 
But I want to tell you, God wants to fix your life up. Hallelujah. God wants to take you where you are right now and begin to pour in the oil and the wine. He wants to give you truth, amen, and the word of God. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to change, amen. You're going to change what you do. You're going to change how you speak. You may not get there in a day, but if you let God work on you, he's a master at changing lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like the Lord spoke to Jeremiah going down to the potter's house. He said, I want you to see the potter. He's working to work on the wheel. Amen. And Jeremiah went down there and the potter was shaping this pot. And it didn't look the way he wanted it. Or maybe there was a flaw in it. And so they had to make another pot. And so they smashed it all back down again. And they began to make another pot. And God said to Jeremiah... Oh, house of Israel, can't I do with you like this potter is doing with the pot? Can't you and won't you let me shape you and mold you and make you into an image that I want and that I can use? Can I get a witness? Amen. Let me mold on you. Let me instruct you. Let me guide you. And let me teach you the things of God. Hallelujah. There are people today that I'm amazed that they have once originally were following God. They once originally did the things for the Lord. And somewhere in their life they decided to go a different direction. And God was then no longer their shepherd. He was no longer the mold maker of their life. And they began to get into sin. And when you do that, then the devil is your leader. Can I get a witness? He's your Lord then. And once you begin to surrender yourself to another spirit... As the scripture says, whoever you yield your servants to obey his servants, you are to whom you obey. And so once you surrender to another spirit, then you start doing things that that spirit wants you to do. And the devil is not a good spirit. Jesus likes to guide you. He's a shepherd. The devil is a cattle driver. Can I get a witness? Amen. He tries to force you and drive you to do things that you don't want to do. Make you eat stuff you don't want to eat. Make you go places you don't want to go. Hello. Make you say things you don't want to say. It's awful quiet. Amen. The devil's a bad devil. And he's not easy. He doesn't lead you. He tries to force you to do things. Jesus is a shepherd. He gets out ahead of you. And he does things the right way. And then he says, come on. Come and follow me. Come and do the things that I'm doing. And when we begin to understand that Jesus isn't going to make us do anything. Amen. We have to then follow We have to follow the example. And once we start doing that, we get a better life. Hello. We get to, amen, enjoy better things. Amen. Good things happen for those who are obedient to God. Can you say amen? Amen. In this passage of scripture, it said, uh, if you, if your son asks asks bread, that you would not give him a stone. That when he asked for a fish, he would never give him a serpent. And so when we begin to to follow God, that he's going to give us the things that we have need of. And I can tell you all the years that I served the Lord, the Lord has made provision for me. And some days I did not know how it was going to come, but it always comes. And you can't tell him how to do it, but you he will be able to find a way to get you, amen, what you need. Amen. God intended for us to trust him, and so we have this avenue of prayer and worship that we use in order to communicate with God. In this passage of scripture, amen, it's telling us that if your son asked you for something, you would not give him something that would hurt him. And if you're bad news, can I get a witness? Hello? If you're bad news, guess what God is who's holy? He's not certainly going to give you something that's bad for you. Now, when I first got saved, amen, I thought for sure God was going to get even with me. Hello? He was going to get even with me for all the bad things I did, so he's going to send me to China. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hello? Send me somewhere I didn't want to go to do something I didn't want to do. He's for sure going to send me somewhere it's really hard and impossible just to get even. Can I get a witness? Amen. But that's me. 
Hello, that's not God. And I can surely tell you, He will never send you somewhere that you will not be effective. He'll never send you, or He'll, he'll never make you go anyway, but He'll never send you somewhere that you won't be good at doing whatever it is you're doing. Amen. If you go to any leadership class, you'll find that every time they teach you, I don't care who it is, before the class is over, they'll tell you, do what you do best. I don't care whoever, I don't, you, can, you can read it, whatever books you want to, somewhere in the leadership book, it will tell you that very thing. Amen. Now it said here, ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. What the literal Greek says, ask and keep on asking. It's awful quiet in this place. It doesn't say ask one time and that's all you have to do. Go look it up. Amen. I had to do it. <laughs> Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Amen. When you get done asking, keep on seeking, start seeking some more. Amen. After you get done seeking, start knocking some more. Come on. Amen. Come on. Do you really want to know the king? Do you really want to know how he operates? Do you really want a miracle? Amen. I want to find out how the Holy Spirit works so I can plug myself in and get the things that I need from God. He's a supernatural God. When blind Bartimaeus showed up with Jesus, he left seeing. Can I get a witness? Amen. He did. Hallelujah. I like what Jesus does. Amen. He's powerful. He's supernatural. And he can do anything. I want to be a part of that. Amen. I like this passage of scripture because initially if we're honest about it when we're seeking something or asking something of the Lord usually we don't know everything about that subject and so when we're asking something of God we need to keep on asking and keep on seeking until we understand how and what it is number one and how God can bless us with it too many times we will approach God and ask him for something if he doesn't do it in five minutes we're gonna get mad at him hello but when we keep on asking what we're doing is we're saying to the Lord Lord we really need this to be done in our lives and so we're gonna keep on asking and seeking and we trust you that you're gonna show us how to get it and we're not going to do anything wicked we're not gonna try to change anything in the Bible we're gonna simply follow you and if we don't get it today, then we're going to come back tomorrow. If we don't get it tomorrow, we'll come back the next day. But we're going to seek and ask and pursue something from you. And we're going to live a good life. And here it said, a good tree does not produce evil fruit. And an evil tree does not produce good fruit. So I don't know about you, but I want some good fruit on my tree. I want my tree to produce good fruit. So I want to find a godly way to do things. Amen. I shared this story many, many times. Amen. But this happened to a friend of mine. He wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he prayed, 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 prayed. Of course, for himself all the time. And he never did get it. Prayed, 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 prayed. He still didn't get it. So he, did, he wasn't really sure what was going on. But he had another friend that wanted the baptism. So he laid his hands upon him and began to pray for him. And when he prayed for him, he got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and started speaking in tongues when he put it towards somebody else. Hello. Hello. What you got in there works real good for somebody else, not just for you. Hello. And when you begin to point it at somebody else, it'll work for them. By the way, you probably have lots of friends that need you to point the Holy Ghost at them. Can I get a witness? And start praying for them. Anybody have a, a friend in need or a friend that needs help? You probably know plenty of people. You need to start doing that. Amen. Now, we get prayers all or calls all the time for people wanting prayer at Rock of Faith. Amen. And people that don't even go to this church, amen, call us for prayer. Now, it would be real easy for me to tell them, do you go to this church? Hello? Do you attend this church? Hello? Do you pay tithe in this church? Hello? Come on. We don't do that, amen. If you call us, we'll pray, but that's why they call us, amen. They want us to pray, and what I realize, that's what God put me here on the planet for. 
And I've been thinking about some people that are sick in their body and God wants me to pray for them. They call me and ask me for prayer. It's no big deal. Can we get a witness? I don't care if they never come here. I don't care if they never support this church. I'm going to pray for them like I was the one that had the sickness. I'm going to pray for them like I was the one in trouble. I'm going to pray that God will touch them. Amen. Because that's what he wants for me to do. Can I get a witness? Amen. He wants me to yield to the spirit and let him use me the way he wants to use me. Glory. And he wants me to pray for other people. And he doesn't care how mean they are, how stubborn they are, where they live. Can I get a witness? Amen. He wants me to pray for them. Hallelujah. I love the story of the Good Samaritan. The guy that came by. Amen. The Levite went by and the priest went by. They weren't going to help the guy laying on the ground. Probably checked his ID. Amen. He didn't belong to their church. And so he just kept going. Amen. Hello. By the way, if you want me to, I can introduce you to a lot of pastors. If you don't go to their church, they will not help you. Hello. They will not help you. In fact, I, there's a church, well, not too far from here, let's put it that way. If you go in the office, they have a sign up that says, we do not help people financially. And that means you. Hello. Hello. We're not going to do it. And I began to realize that that's exactly what God wants me to do when, when people call me. And I shouldn't think, amen, anything of it because one day I was a sinner. I wasn't serving God and God started sending people to me. They began to witness to me and tell me about Jesus. And they began to go out of their way and come to me personally. I've shared it many times. I don't care whether I was at the beach or at school. Somebody would come right to me and put a track in my hand and tell me about Jesus. I was studying in the, in the campus, amen, and somebody skipped everybody else's table and come and sat at my table and told me about Jesus. And Jesus sent a lot of people, amen, to witness to me. And I had an aunt that was praying for me. And eventually I got saved. And so somebody through the, the process of God's kingdom began to do the, what their part was and I got saved and I realized today that God wants me to do the same thing. I don't care if somebody doesn't come, we could still pray for them. What if they get healed? What if they get delivered and set free? What if they become the greatest evangelist that ever walked on the earth? What if they get to do some great thing for God? You could be, amen, the reason why somebody, amen, comes and serves the Most High God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I love the Lord because of all the things that he does. And time would fail me for telling you how many times he watched over my children and kept them safe. How many times he's done things when we needed a bill paid, how many times he's paid it. Or if we needed a car, how he made arrangements for us to get one. Or if we needed something else, how he made provision. How he made provision for my wife and Matt and James's girlfriend to go all the way to Germany, let him watch him play football in Germany. There's no way we could have done that. There's no way. We could have sent him there and yet God did it. I love the Lord this morning. Y'all don't y'all not follow me. I love the King this morning. I love Jesus with all of my heart. I love to pray. Amen. And if he wants to put a burden on me tonight, I'll pray. Amen. I will labor. Amen. I will lift up whoever it is because I love Jesus. He's worth praying. He's worth being interceding for. He's worth, amen, loving. He's worth working for. Can I get a witness? Amen. Lots of people, you have friends, they never helped you at all. Can I get a witness? Amen. You want to move, they will never help you. Can I get a witness? Amen. You want to do something, they'll never show up. But if you ask Jesus, he will show up. Can I get a witness? Amen. If you call upon the name of the Lord, he will do something to help you. Amen. He will do some great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, at a, I'm at a loss today for the fact of why people want to change. They want to change the Bible. They want to change what we do in service to God. I even told you I get people to write me letters. They want me to take the book of James out of the Bible. Amen. I thought, you stupid idiot. Why don't you pray and learn what it means? Amen. <laughs> I know what it means. I'm not, I don't want to change a word out of the book of James. 
It may rebuke me every time I read it. <laughs> I'm not going to take it out. It's good stuff. Amen. Amen. If you want to know James that wrote the book, they said that he had calluses on his knees for the hours that he spent in prayer. That beats my record. Amen. You can check my knees. There's no calluses on them. Amen. Hello. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. This is the place of change. This is the place that, that virtually in itself it's not going to change. The Holy Spirit is never going to be different today or any other time in the future than what He is today. The Word of God is never going to change. God Himself is not going to change because what He's made of is going to help you and bless you and sustain you. There's no reason for it to change. When you leave today, you're probably going to go buy one of your favorite foods, whatever it is. You like that food or you wouldn't go pay for it. Can I get a witness? Amen. You like it, amen, and so you get it. And this won't be the only time you'll go get it. You'll go get it next week and the week after and the week after. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hello? You like it, you'll go get it again and again and again and again and again. And what I'm saying this morning is that when I met Jesus, I found someone that could sustain me, someone that could help me. I never had this before in my life, and I don't want to change anything. There's people that I meet in my life. I don't want them to change. I want to be their friend. I don't want to manipulate them at all. I don't want to try to con them out of something or make them something they don't want to be. But I'll tell you, when you meet Jesus, He's so much love and so much friendship that after he gets done with you, you change. Can I get a witness? Amen. The way you lived, you don't want to do it anymore. Just being in his presence changes you and you want to follow him and serve him. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I remember the story. I guess it, it bears repeating. This man, Christian man, owned a company and he wanted everybody in his company to be a Christian and do the things that he did. And so he started setting a bunch of rules. <laughs> and he had people that were not saved. When they answered the phone, he wanted them to say, praise the Lord, this is so-and-so. <laughs> and needless to say, when somebody that doesn't know the Lord says, praise the Lord, it doesn't sound right. Anybody know the sounding brass and tinkling cymbal? Amen. And so he had all these procedures and, and he had the people had to answer the telephone. And when they said a certain, a certain thing, they had to either say, praise the Lord or glory to God. Amen. And so after a while, people obviously didn't want to say it. And so they said it sarcastically. Hello. Y'all not listen to me. It's this man's company. Amen. And you can't make somebody praise the Lord that doesn't want to do it. Amen. You can pay them to say it, but it will not be the same as someone that gets saved and praises God. Hallelujah. Amen. The churches have removed from worshiping and serving God. Everyone needs a miracle, but nobody wants to praise the Lord. Can I get a witness? Amen. People need a miracle, but they don't want to read their Bible. They want to get it in six seconds. And if you can do that anywhere, I'd like to see you do it. Amen. Hello. Even if you go to 7-Eleven, it takes you longer than that to get a soda. Can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. As I was thinking about these things this week, it's just been on me. Why do people want to change the Lord Jesus? There's people I met that personally I don't, I, we clash, our personalities clash. And I may not be able to get along with somebody. But when I met Jesus, I realized, number one, he's the Lord. But there isn't anything about him that I want to change. In the book of Acts, in the first chapter, Jesus spoke to the disciples and said this. After you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power to become my witnesses. He didn't say, once you get smoke and lights and mirrors in the church, you're going to get power. Can I get a witness? Are y'all not listening to me? Come on, once you get some fancy whatever, you're going to have power. No. He said, once you receive my spirit, you shall receive power. Yeah. 
And he said, you wait here. You wait here. You wait here until I send the power. You don't understand what I'm saying today. But he had to take his blood. And he had to go to the holiest of all in heaven. He's man's high priest. When Aaron was here, he had to do the same thing. And they took the blood of the heifer. Uh, 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 blood of a sinless lamb as well. And sprinkled the things of God. They lined the men of God up and sprinkled them with the blood of Jesus on these garments they had. They were magnificent. They had jewels in the breastplate. I, wouldn't, I would not even dream of doing that to one of my suits. Can I get a witness? Amen. To throw blood all over my suit. Hallelujah. They did it. Amen. I'll tell you, if it's Jesus' blood, go ahead and do it. Can I get a witness? Amen. Go ahead and do it. Hallelujah. They had the most magnificent, but Jesus had to take his own blood and he went into the holiest of all in heaven and he sprinkled the holy things with his precious blood and then he sent back the Holy Spirit and they were all in the upper room on the day of Pentecost and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. You don't understand what I'm saying, but that same Spirit can bless you. That same Spirit can do some great things for you. They began to speak in other tongues. Peter got in jail one time and they all went into a, a house and they all began to pray in the Spirit speaking in tongues and it wasn't long that the angel came along and slapped Peter on the side and told him to get up, amen and the gates began to open and the doors began to open of their own accord and before Peter knew it he was standing in the street set free because some crazy Pentecostal person yielded to the Holy Ghost living God and started speaking in other tongues and got a miracle for obeying God. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. You want to stay in jail? You want to get out? Hello? I want to get out. I want to speak in tongues. Amen. I need to get out. Hello? Some of you been in jail. I know you. Amen. You want to get out? Hello? <laughs> yeah. I'm preaching to me. Amen. The Spirit of God changed their lives. It changed the whole world. These guys, these 12 apostles plus others turned the whole known world upside down by yielding to the Holy Spirit. I don't want anything else. If the Holy Spirit embarrasses you, that is your problem. If the Holy Spirit embarrasses you, you don't like people speaking in tongues because it embarrasses you, go ahead, do without it. But I'll guarantee it will be to your regret and when you learn what the real power is, amen, Esau learned about it. He lost his birthright, and he never got the blessing that Jacob did. And Jacob was blessed his whole entire life because he had rather have God than some, amen, plate of food. Can I get a witness? Amen. Lentils, those are beans. Amen. No, thank you. I'll take the Holy Spirit. Hello. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll close with this. I'm having fun. I don't know if I'm helping you or not today, but I'm having fun. But Jesus said in the same discourse while he's teaching these people, he said this wise man decided to use the word of God. And when the wind came and the storm came, his house stood because it was founded upon a rock. But the foolish man just didn't want to do it. And so the wind came and the storm came just like it will to the good man. It'll happen to the bad person. And when the wind came and the storm came, it destroyed the house. And great, it says, was the fall of it. Because there was nothing to resist it. There was no hope. There was no help. The Holy Spirit was no, not there to sustain the house or protect the house or do anything for the man. And he was destroyed just simply because he didn't want to listen to what God had to say. Amen. I said this the other night, and I'll say it again. And I thought about this week while I was driving around. I cannot go outside without seeing God. In Romans, it says that in nature, that the eternal power in Godhead is seen in nature. I cannot go outside and see God's creation and deny that there's a God. 
I can't go out there and look at the sky or see all the birds or to see the animals and the diversity of human beings to go to the ocean and see the ocean and see these great men massive created creative things that God created that no man could do it nobody could do it and it didn't just freak out can I get a witness amen Big Bang Theory, amen. The Big Bang was God. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hello. It wasn't evolution. No such thing. Couldn't happen. Amen. I can't, I can't go outside. When I'm driving down the street, I hear his voice. Hello. When I'm doing things, I can sense his presence. Nothing like it. Have him go with you all day, every day. Pray and bow your head and sense his presence. Come into your car or your house or wherever it is you're praying. There's nothing like I don't want to change anything about Jesus. If Jesus wants me to speak in tongues, I'm going to do it. If Jesus wants me to laugh, I'm going to laugh. If he wants me to cry, I'm going to cry. If it has something to do with the king, let's go, let's go ahead and do it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because it will benefit us. Amen. It will be a blessing if we yield to the Holy Spirit. I want to say this, and we're going to take time to pray, and we're going to have communion today. Why don't you let God's Holy Spirit take control of your life? Why don't you let God take control of your life? Even though you come to church, I mean truly, release your life to His direction and let Him lead you the way He wants to. I know many years ago when I started doing this, I'll never forget the, the change that was in me, but I wanted to be led of the Spirit. And God began to speak to me on what He wanted me to do. And even though early on I didn't know that it would ever take place, God knew that it would. And I realized that I want to be led of the Spirit. When I pray, I don't list stipulations for God. If I have a need of some type, Amen. I want the Lord to bring it however He wants to do it. There was a time many years ago I needed some extra money. And I worked at a place and they never gave overtime. It was strictly Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Never, never gave anybody overtime. And we had a need and a need came up. And my boss came to me and said, I'd like you to work overtime. And I thought it was kind of peculiar because they never gave anybody over. Nobody got it. Amen. Unless there's some kind of national disaster. Hello. And I got to work a certain number of hours over time. And it was to the penny of what I needed for my bill. Hello. And I know there are people that would be sitting at home waiting for somebody to come and write them a check. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hello. That's how I want God to do it. He's going to send me the money. I'll work overtime anytime to get my bill paid. Hello. I'll do it. I did it. I did. I'll be glad to do it again. Amen. And I realized, you know what? Sometimes when God blesses me, He sends me in a way that is different than when I thought. Sometimes when I need extra money, maybe I'll get to do some weddings or maybe I'll do something else happen. Maybe somebody will give me a Pentecostal handshake. Those are pretty nice too. Hello. But I realized I'm, God's got me. You don't know the story. Some of you don't know it. But in the Old Testament, uh, there is a term called a bond servant. And when people owed another person money, their family members had to actually go and work off the debt. So they would go to the man's farm or his business or whatever and work for him until the debt was paid. But if they got married and they had children while they were there and they decided they liked to stay there, they became a bond servant. And what that meant was the man declared plainly, I like my boss. I like my job, I love my wife and my family. And so they took him over to a post and they took it all. By the way, you won't like this, by the way, amen. And they poked a hole in his ear 
and they put an earring in his ear so that signified him to being a bond servant for this man and he chose to be a worker for this man the rest of his life he chose to do it he loved the man he loved his job he loved what he was doing and paul called himself a bond servant of jesus christ and i know what he meant by that and i feel the same way there's just something about it when jesus comes into the room come on when the presence of god comes into the room you want to you want to be where you are you want to be close to christ when something happens and you pray and jesus enters into your prayer there's just something about that that you you enjoy his company and he's going to lead you and guide you and take care of your situation there's nothing like it there's nothing like it on the planet nothing can make you feel so loved and wanted as when the presence of god comes into your situation hello it's wonderful to be a bond servant of jesus christ i don't know about you but when the wind blows and the rain blows i don't want my house to go under i want my house to stand so i'm standing on the eternal word of god amen I'm standing on his promises would you bow your heads with me this morning for just a minute and we're going to take a minute to pray hallelujah hallelujah I feel like today that for this reason that I, as I shared this scripture and these scriptures there's somebody in here that God is talking to that he really wants to shape your life and up until this time you haven't really yielded yourself wholly to him and I like to know with an uplifted hand, if that's you, if you'll lift that hand up this morning for just a minute, I'll know who I'm praying for. I see that hand. I see those hands. I see hands going up. All right. I want to pray with you this morning with every head bowed. And I want to pray that you will surrender to God's Holy Spirit and let Him work in your life the way He really wants to. Surrender to His will. Surrender to His voice and surrender to His will. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus for this wonderful, wonderful service this morning. Lord, I believe you're speaking to people's hearts today. And Lord, we desire you to touch them on the inside. Lord, we want you to shape them like Jeremiah saw the potter shape that clay, bowl or pot, whatever it was. Lord, they want to be shaped by your hands. They want to be led by your spirit. Lord, we pray for these that are here today. Help them surrender to you even now lord you have a plan for their life and whatever it is god it'll be better than the plan that they have god may you touch them right now by your spirit and your power may you move on their behalf and lord will give you all the glory and the praise and honor lord if they don't know you they can confess you as savior and lord even now and lord if there is sin between them and you all they have to do is confess it and Lord, you'll forgive them and cleanse them according to your word. And so today, God, we're asking you to touch your people. Move in a mighty way on their behalf. And Lord, we'll give you the glory and the praise and the honor. And Lord, we ask these things today in your name. The name of Jesus and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to, at this time, receive communion. So I'm going to ask our ushers to come. Those men that can help us, amen, with dispensing the elements, amen. We need at least four today. We need at least four people to come and show up today. Hallelujah. I'm going to read some scripture, and then we're going to receive communion. And as I shared last week, our brother Don got saved when he received communion. And I'm going to say it again, if we do this right, you will get blessed. You will get blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you get something out of this today? Say amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. If 
First Corinthians eleven twenty three. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given things, he brake it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Amen. This morning, we're going to hold the bread up. I think we almost all of us have received the, the elements. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everyone have the bread in the cup now? Hallelujah. Let's hold the bread up this morning. Amen. This is representation of the suffering of Christ in his body. Um, we share it many times. We are not eating his body, but we're partaking of his suffering. By his stripes you're healed. By that beating that he took, it can bring you deliverance today. If you do this correctly, God can bless you while we receive this today as we hold this up. And we're going to pray. Make sure everything is right between you and the Lord before you take it. Father, we thank you today for this great opportunity to receive communion. May you cover us with your precious blood, Lord, if there's anything between us and you. May you forgive us today. And may we have the right to partake of your suffering and of your body that you gave for us so freely. Thank you for your mighty power and ability. Thank you for special grace. We ask it in Jesus' name. Let's take the bread. Let's eat it all. Let's receive it. Praise the Lord. This is the New Testament. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm looking at some people today that there's a transformation that's going to take place in your life. I'm looking at some people today that today you're a, a polywog, but tomorrow you're going to be a frog. Today you're a caterpillar, but soon you're going to be a butterfly. And when you come out, you're going to be the most beautiful creature that God ever made. Let's drink the cup. Let's drink it. Praise the Lord. Would you lift your hands with me and let's praise the Lord today. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we honor you today for your great goodness to us. Lord, we praise you and we give you the glory and all the honor. Thank you for your mighty power and your ability today. Thank you, Lord, that you are the great God the great Savior, the great one that can mold us and shape us into whatever image you like. If we'll surrender ourselves to you, Lord, you will make us just like you want us. And we give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we give you the honor today. Thank you for your wonderful, wonderful blessings in our life. Thank you, Lord, for making a difference. We thank you, Lord, and we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Thank you for the mighty power of God Thank you for your wonderful blessings. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One more time, would you turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. Tell him, I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to dismiss in a word of prayer.
We have a staff meeting tonight at 5 o'clock. I'd like to encourage you to be here, please. Next week at 5, we're going to have our board meeting. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for being here and uh, supporting the church. I want to let everyone know, some, some are here and some don't know, all six coolers are now here and installed. Every one of them. Amen. All six of them. Amen. The pledges we received and everything, we've installed all of them, and we'll be using them probably pretty soon if it's going to be 90 on Wednesday. So we might be starting to use them pretty soon. But we want to thank you all for wonderful help. We're getting close once again to Easter and Mother's Day. Let's continue to pray. Let's be faithful to the God, to God's house, and let's let's do a good job for the Lord this year. I believe He wants to use us in a special way. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask that, Brother Johnny. Would you dismiss us, please, today? Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Greet someone and tell me you're glad they came. God bless you. Praise God.